What's up guys, Maiden Slave here, and it is time to talk Angel of Retribution by Judas Priest, their 15th studio album, and uh, their big comeback, you know, Rob's back, right? Yeah, woohoo! Rob Halford has come back. Actually, he came back um, quite a few years before they actually made this album. They did a lot of touring, you know, the comeback stuff. And uh, eventually they got into the studio to do a new album. Now when this album first came out, it got a lot of good reviews. But it seems as though as time has gone by, people have started to come out and kind of speak the truth about it. And the truth about it is the fact that it is, to start, not as good as their classics. And um, number two for me is, it's just not a very strong album. Um, and it's not like it's just outright bad, um, it doesn't hurt your ears, it's just the fact that it is weak to me, especially from a band that has written so much good music, it, it just seems like they took so long to actually make a new studio album with Rob that you would probably expect a lot, but you actually end up getting um, at its best moments, kind of a watered-down version of Painkiller, the album, and uh, at its worst moments, kind of like Ram It Down meets Demolition. And um, it added in a few new things that weren't that good either um, for me. But let's kind of talk about maybe some good things uh, first. Uh, the artwork is one of my favorite pieces of artwork out of this band. Uh, it has the classic, I believe it's the Painkiller Angel. Um, I could be wrong, I'm not a Judas Priest specialist or anything. Um, but either way, it looks really cool. I've always loved that cover. Uh, it's got the Judas Priest little sign right here, the emblem. Got the classic Priest logo back, Rob's back. Um, the production is pretty good compared to the past two albums but it's not nearly as good as some of their um, previous albums, Painkiller obviously being one of them. And it's not really that good compared to a lot of albums around this time either. It's just pretty generic, you know, it works. Um, a little interesting thing to note about it is Roy Z actually produced it. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Roy Z, He's pretty famous at this point. He played with Bruce Dickinson in a solo band when they got good. He helped produce Bruce Dickinson's solo band, and he helped produce Rob Halford's solo band. So, obviously, Rob Halford coming into Priest, probably telling them, hey, you know, I got this new producer, he's good. And he actually had some writing credits on this album, too, uh, which weren't really that impressive. Um, but I have a feeling that he didn't have too much power um, in the studio with these guys, because for the most part, it definitely sounds like Judas Priest. So anyways, enough yakking about all that crap. Let's just get straight into the songs and see what this album is made of. It starts off with a song called Judas Rising, which had a very, very cool intro. Obviously, it you know, it has an intro. I mean, we were all probably expecting this. This is probably one of the most appropriate situations to have an intro, kind of obviously having some kind of a comeback album. And I liked it, actually. I really liked the intro of it. Um, with a Rob scream coming back in. It's so, like, refreshing, and it feels so good after uh, experiencing the past two albums with Ripper, who wasn't quite the same as Rob Halford. He just seemed like, eh, you know, like a tribute version. So to hear Rob scream on a Priest album, I gotta say, was really, really cool. <sighs> but the song kind of goes nowhere. I was very, very disappointed and I was very, very just underwhelmed. It, it was a very underwhelming intro. I was expecting at least the intro of this album to be just insane. Th this is Rob coming back. Like, you have to realize how big of a deal this is. And I paralleled it with another big comeback in metal. Uh, a lot of people would consider to be their rivals, Iron Maiden. Um, on Brave New World with the Wicker Man, there's so much energy, the, bound, the band sounds so tight, they sound so ready to go, and Bruce sounds amazing. And Judas Rising is, you know, it, it's a very slow tempo, it doesn't do much musically, the vocals are only really impressive in the beginning, 
and it just it's a very very underwhelming opener I was very disappointed um, by Judas Rising Deal with the Devil is the next song on the album and uh, it was pretty good uh, although I have to say you know nothing special this song pretty much makes up the formula for this entire album being that it has a very just underwhelming beginning and end with a pretty good interlude very melodic you know that becomes a problem because eventually at, at some point on the album it just kinda feels like they just inserted melodic interlude here and then just it just felt not that good that's all I'm gonna say and uh, deal with the devil is not that good the next song is called revolution and this was probably the worst song on the album for me just complete garbage um, the ending was the worst part about it you know by the ending it's repeated the chorus so much and then it has some really it just kinda hurt my ears uh, screams from Rob Halford very just unappealing the next song is called worth fighting for and this is kind of the ballad or at least the first time that they slow down on this album uh, Rob's vocals were very odd sounding to me and uh, this song kind of fails to do what it's supposed to do which is invoke emotion for the most part it was just boring uh, if you have a slow paced song like that and it doesn't invoke any emotion doesn't make you feel any way then it's just slow music and that's what um, worth fighting for was the next song is called demonizer and it doesn't get much more generic than this um, for the most part the tempo was very slow like I said it seems like they were trying to play like they played on painkiller um, but I don't know it's just it might be because of their uh, uh, older age at this point um, and you know I don't know what it is but it just seems like the average tempo on this album is, is just slow it kind of actually feels at least tempo wise like they're like they're getting older um, but once again it has a pretty good musical interlude in there very melodic um, yeah pretty much I mean Priest can probably do that at any point in any song anyways uh, so it's nothing special to me the next song is called Wheels of Fire um, same shit just pointless Angel um, this was another slow kind of acoustic uh, song and it, it actually did a lot better uh, for me than Worth Fighting For it was pretty good um, but in my opinion they have done much better than it um, that's pretty much all I gotta say about that the next song is called Hell Rider which had a very very cool intro once again uh, it was pretty good too it was one of the better moments on this album um, but the solos were just terrible they were just god awful and I know I don't really talk about solos that much uh, but that pretty much means that they're good, they get the job done, I don't really notice them too much, they sound good. But if they're really bad, uh, or if they're not there, um, then I'll feel it, and they were just bad, you know, it kind of hurt my ears on the song, I gotta say, just, and it wasn't only the playing, the, the playing was bad, it was terrible, uh, but the sound, it sounded very out of place, um, yeah, I just didn't like the solos, once again, another melodic interlude and at this point this is when you start feeling like okay they just they just placed it there and you know that's whatever some cool twin lead parts at the end but other than that just another um, mediocre song that goes into the next song eulogy and um, the coolest thing about this song or I guess you can say the the best thing about the song is the fact that it has a lot of references um, to past Judas Priest songs, which somebody can come out and say, oh, you know, they're rehashing the past, but that's not even my biggest problem with this album. Anyways, yeah, it just, I don't know. Uh, after listening to it the first time, I'd probably skip it every time. Loch Ness, the last song on the album, and uh, before listening to this album, if you look at the playlist, which I'm sure a lot of people do, uh, a lot of Priest fans and you know, just metal people in general like to look at the playlist before they listen to it. Um, you can see that this song, Loch Ness, is over 13 minutes, which is actually pretty dang unusual for Judas Priest to play really long songs. And uh, listening to Loch Ness actually made me realize why they don't really do this too often. I mean, ta I'm talking like really, really over 10 minute long songs. Um, because they don't do it good. Uh, and this song was the perfect example of a long song um, 
not really done right. Um, it, for me, it kind of had the same problem as Blood Red Skies. And I'll even say that I like Blood Red Skies more than uh, this song, Loch Ness. And I didn't really like that song. But my point is, the problem with this song is, once it gets into the main chunk, um, very slow paced, doesn't do much, and it goes on for about 13 minutes. Now, I know that there is a pretty short period of time that they slow it down, and you think it's going to go somewhere, but it really doesn't. For the most part, this whole song is the same thing, and it could have been cut down to probably even less than five minutes, and even then it would have been a very weak uh, song, just very boring, not worth 13 minutes of your time, let me tell you. Uh, and that's it, actually. Um, that's the last song on the album. And uh, that brings me to my favorite part about this album, which is the fact that it is only about 52 minutes. You know, it's, it's under an hour, which is quite refreshing um, for Priest and for a lot of metal bands at this point that have been around for a long time. You know, as I mentioned before in previous reviews, you know, longer isn't better. And, you know, if you can pump out a really, really good album in about 40 minutes, even less than that, I'm, I'm, I'm happier than a boring album in over an hour, you know. Uh, so I really appreciated that from Priest. But that doesn't save it for me, actually. Uh, for the most part, you're, you're not going to hear anything new. I mean, you could take any Judas Priest fan and ask them to be completely honest and say, and hold up, Angel and um, Painkiller. Or, you know, maybe even Defenders of the Faith, you know, Screaming. British deal, and say, choose which one you want to listen to. Most of the time, especially if you don't tell them what you're doing, they're going to choose the older album, because Priest, they've done everything on this album before, and they've done it way better before. There's really no point in listening to this album unless you are a hardcore, diehard Judas Priest fan, and you love the sound of Rob Halford's voice, and you love the sound of these guys playing together and you want to hear new music and, you, and you're kind of sick of all their old stuff, um, that is probably the only reason to uh, enjoy this. They do absolutely nothing special on this album. It's, you know, it's that simple. Um, so I'm going to give Angel of Retribution by Juice Priest a 4.5 out of 10. And I will see you guys next time.